everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for this week's drawing I'm going to be working on the family of Imladris. So it's going to have um, Eladon and Erehir and Elrond and Calibrian and little Arwen. So this work is inspired by my favorite author J.R.R. Tolkien. The idea for this work is that um, baby Arwen is just been born, has just been born and Arwen's brothers and Father are by Calibrian side. So when I started working on this project, I already had an idea what I wanted the end product to look like. I wanted to make sure that all the colors were soft, kind of like the scenes that you see in the movies, where the scenes of Enladras, where everything is very kind of pale and just beautiful and kind of serene. So I want to make sure that I kept everything kind of pastel in the colors. But when you're working with that, you need to remember that when you start off. So um, working with this, I started with a very pale color for their skin tone, knowing that I would probably come in later and darken it, which I actually did. While working with colors and color choices, you just need to remember that your as your picture progresses, so will your colors. Speaking of tweaking color choices, one of the biggest places that I really had to work on color choice was with the um, hair of Elrond and his sons. So according to Tolkien, um, Elrond and his twin sons both had, or all three had very dark hair. So I wanted to be able to create this almost black hair. However, a long time ago when I um, created the or my original drawing of um, Ryu, which I will link in the description cards above, um, I found that using blue as a highlight, a light blue as a highlight color, actually kind of creates an ethereal look for the character. So I kind of wanted to bring that into these elves because elves are kind of magical creatures. So I worked the hair using the light blue, the, sh the shine is light blue, and then I used Prussian blue to blend it out and then into black. But this caused a little bit of a problem. Because of the way the picture was so light, and everywhere else, it meant that their hair looked a little too blue, as if it was blue. So I really kind of muddied down those colors by adding um, cool gray number three or C3 in my Copic markers. This helped to kind of mute the colors. So while you're working, always remember that you can mute colors by mixing other colors on top. I did the same thing for Elrond's ropes. So technically the colors of Enladris or um, Rivendell are kind of a silvery blue and it was too bright blue so I kind of muted those once again using my grays so mixing grays on top of your base colors can really add a bit more texture a bit more depth and really kind of mute colors if they're too bright for you so one of the things you may notice about this piece is that as I'm working through it a lot of the details become finer and finer. In fact, some of the finest details that I added, I added last, um, which were the headboard of her bed. Fine detail like that really adds a sense of gracefulness and a very sophisticated air to your drawing. But it can also create some problems when you're working, um, especially if you're working with markers. So usually if I was working on a piece where I wasn't, um, I wasn't focused on trying just to use one medium, and I was permitting myself to use mixed media, I would use colored pencils for some of the finer detail. That will prevent um, me from going over the lines and um, any of the feathering or bleeding from becoming so obvious that it kind of makes the rest of the painting look really murky. However, this drawing, I was kind of trying to stick with one medium. I was trying just to use my markers. Um, the past two drawings that I've been working on, I've been really trying just to focus on markers. That meant that I had to be very careful while working with the markers. So I always use the brush tip anyways because I like the brush tip better than the chisel tip. And what I did is I barely brushed the very tip of the marker against the paper, holding it almost absolutely up and down, straight up and down against the paper. That meant that I could have a little bit more control over how it went and very, very carefully, very slowly brushed over it until it filled in properly. Because I know that my paper feathers pretty bad, I also would wait just a couple moments before I put down the brush again. That would also allow me to see how much feathering is going on 
and um, adjust from there. Working with the finer details also becomes very complicated when you're trying to blend colors because blending colors means that you add so much ink to the paper so that they'll bleed together, but that also increases the amount of feathering. So what I did is um, I made sure that I reversed the process, so I laid down my darkest first and then laid down the lightest, or um, if I was would forget to do that, I would actually go let the base layer dry and then come in with the lighter layer on um, the darker layers and then blend from there. To finish up this drawing, I went through and any of the places where I went over because um, I wasn't steady enough with my detailing, um, I would go through that and cover that up with a white gel pen. And then I went through and some of the very light places, like her white sheets, I put those in very last. That way I could see how much shadowing I needed. That also allowed me to adjust for shadows underneath um, Erohir's backside and places like that. I also went through and darkened some of the shadows on the skin just a little bit. That way it would look a little bit more like they were in a fairly dark room. I want to thank you guys so much for watching my video. Please comment down below, share this video with your friends, like it, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!